Hi guys, my name is Crystal Bella. I talk about dyspraxia a lot and today I'm going to be answering a load of questions that I really commonly get asked. One question that I do really like is, do you think your thought process is different to those without dyspraxia? Now I think this is a really good question. One of the pictures that gets posted around a lot to the dyspraxia Facebook pages is this I think it really does kind of illustrate exactly what having dyspraxia is like because it's true your thought process isn't just start off here and finish here you, you take a longer route to it and I think that's amazing I think that's such a great trait that dyspraxia has for everyone because it makes you more creative you're more likely to think outside the box and you're likely to discover other stuff on the way I mean, sure, fair enough, you're going to hit roadblocks where you've taken the wrong direction to a certain thought process and you start again, but we can only learn from our mistakes, so I think that part of dyspraxia is just amazing. I love it so much. Second question, which has to be the most popular question at the moment, and that is, what type of jobs should someone with dyspraxia go for? This has to be one of the hardest questions to answer because there is no real true answer for it because there are just so many different answers that you can give I mean it really does depend on the person and also what's available to you I'm a very artistic person and for me I would love to be able to work in an industry that allows me to draw all day every day but unfortunately that's a very hard industry to get into and whilst I am still working towards that I have to make exceptions and I have to work so I have to have something but I have found jobs where I have to constantly be doing stuff. As most dyspraxics will know, your concentration is uh, minus 10. So you're probably going to have to find something that can keep you motivated throughout the day. Not the kind of thing that's just the same old and you just get bored and distracted and eventually it's going to become disruptive and it's going to cause issues. You want something where, preferably possibly working as a team, which you might be thinking there's no way I am working in a team. It doesn't necessarily mean you're working with people, but you kind of work as a group to help each other. So I, for example, work in a large team, but everything I do, I do myself. So there's that kind of two-way thing there of having support from other people, but being able to work around doing stuff by yourself, words. Mm. And secondly, it has to be something you enjoy because if you don't enjoy it, it's just going to be awful and then your dyspraxia is really going to shine and for some people that's really difficult for them. I get really frustrated when my dyspraxia really shows. Also, having the right people around you in a job is so important. I've said this in other videos before, your work life is the most important life that you have because if you're full time like I am, you spend most of your time there, they're the people you're going to spend a lot of time around and they have to be understanding people. And if they're not understanding, make them understand because your life is so important, your happiness is the most important thing and if the other people around you aren't making you feel good enough or accepted, then I'd really suggest finding somewhere else to work. And once you move away from that, you'll be surprised how much happy you are. At first, you're going to be like, oh gosh, change, this is going to be awful, but trust me, you'd be so much happier. Next question. What kind of textures do you get on least with? Funny thing, actually, I recently went to a dyspraxia, dyspraxia foundation kind of workshop, and they had caterers that were part of the building that we were at, and they had lots of sandwiches, which was really cool. But the only issues that in the sandwiches were things like tomatoes, onions, and loads of like, lettuce and cress, which is great, lovely and healthy. But I was just thinking, this is an entire room filled with dyspraxic people right now. And textures is one of those things that just aren't our strong side, you know? It's one of our weaknesses. So you just look around and there's people with <laughs> like plates and they've got their sandwiches and they're just picking bits out and it's... Yeah, so kind of stringy type food, slimy food, so like tomatoes and onions, cooked onions, raw onions I'm fine with. The kind of material where you have to stroke it in one direction, because if you brush it in the other direction it has that harsh kind of texture, I can't remember what that's called, velour, I think. It's mostly food that I have issue with, with textures, which makes people think I'm really picky, which yes is true, but... I mean, everyone, everyone has their preferences and 
certain textures food is just yeah. Fourth question, what was school life like for you? Mm, not 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 amazing. I'm sure I'm not the only dyspraxic person who would say that their school life was a bit traumatic for them. Um, back when I went to school, the schools that I went to, no one knew what dyspraxia was, I don't think, because they definitely didn't discover it in me. <laughs> There's a dog with a cone on his head. <laughs> cone of shame. It was quite difficult because it was so obvious that I was different from everyone else, especially when it came to things like sport was just, I don't even need to explain to you for you to imagine what that was like for me. I had issues in my English language classes. A few years ago I was told that I have an immature vocabulary, meaning I don't know many big words and I struggle to put sentences together. So at school it was very obvious that I was so far behind to the rest of my class. And the other thing is, teachers got so frustrated with me, they just gave up and let me sit by myself. If I'd raise my hand, they would ignore me. If I'd go ask them questions, they'd make excuses not to talk to me. If I tried asking anyone else, they would just ignore me and tell me to go away. So this is like other peers in my class. So yeah, I'd just be left to my own defences and I'd have to discover ways of doing things for myself. And especially when it came to the lessons where there's like a sentence and you have to reword that sentence was just awful because I didn't know what I was doing. There was loads of times where I had to answer a question. Because I didn't know what the question was quite asking me, I was always answering it wrong. And teachers were just so frustrated with me that, again, I was just left to my own defences. At school, it was quite difficult. High school, I mean, was very difficult again because it's a larger age group, which means my progress to everyone else just stood out, stood out like a sore thumb in classes, especially classes I didn't like because I didn't have the patience to learn. Whereas in classes that I loved, where the teacher was great, the teacher spent a load of time with me, I'd be the top of that class because I was given the patience and I was given the motivation that I needed. And I was given the extra help as well. Like I loved doing history, I love history more than anything because it's that research, that time you get to spend by yourself to look into things and make like these portfolios and I did really really well in those classes but there were just other classes where maths, science and English for example where you have to spend a lot of time with each student. Obviously they didn't have the time to spend longer with one student than they did others so it came to the point where it was Crystal's not going to learn this at all so we should just just leave her to it, whatever. Whereas the other guys, they are going to learn something, so we may as well actually utilise our time with them because it's going to be worth it. Whereas with me, not so much. Same again when I went to university. We all mostly know my story with university, which was awful. I had to get special equipment. They refused the special equipment and removed me from the course because they refused to get that equipment for me and refused to give me the help and refused to be in any way supportive. In a way, I'm kind of glad that I'm not with them anymore, but it was also a month before I was due to graduate, so I am not the happiest person in the world with them at all. I just want to do it. Last question is, how do you cope at work? How I get by at work is I arrive early. If I'm on the late shift, as it were, I come in for the early so that I can get the morning brief. And if I have any questions, I ask people. I always kind of take that step up to kind of look at my targets, look what I haven't achieved, what I have achieved, great, I've achieved really well, okay, how do I keep that up and how do I improve that so I can do even better? I often ask other people who are doing well in certain areas at their job, so recently I asked someone about a particular area, and you'll be surprised how happy people are if you come to them and ask them for help, because it's quite flattering really. If someone said to me, like you, go, like you guys do, Crystal, how, how do I do this? Or what would you recommend for this? That's an amazing feeling. So imagine how someone you work with would feel if you say to them, you're doing really well in this area, can you help me with that? They would absolutely love to. I mean, the only chances are of them saying no is if they're busy or if, you know, they've had a bit of a bad day. But seriously, ask people as many questions as you can because you can only improve from that. I also try and pace myself by not doing too much, which sometimes causes issues with the people who are in charge of 
timekeeping everyone else because yes I am going to be that bit slower but I do it in a way that helps me improve so if I rush myself things are going to go wrong I'm going to start messing up with my vocabulary and my vocal dyspraxia is just going to fly out the window and show itself to the world which is never fun yeah so just I do have struggles but I've managed to adapt to it over the past few years of knowing about dyspraxia but just pacing myself, asking as many questions as I can. I'm going to be honest and say I've recently started a new job and we get feedback that comes through and this month is the first month that I've had feedback come back from our customers and I am top of the store which I am so proud of but again I think the only reason I've done that is because I'm asking the questions, I'm taking that time to kind of level out everything and just take my time. This is just one thing to bear in mind with dyspraxia, if you take the time and give yourself the patience and surround yourself by people who are supportive, you will be amazing at whatever it is that you're looking to do. It just comes with practice and this applies to anyone, absolutely anyone, I mean it strengthens with your dyspraxia because you know your brain's working at that rate that just really does help. It's yeah, your work life and your social life could be so amazing, you just have to practice with it. You may be struggling now and, you know, I can't say that struggle is going to be over quickly or it's going to take a long time because it really depends on the person, it depends on what your level of dyspraxia is and it's only going to get better from here. That's all the questions I've got for today because I don't want to make this video too long because it's going to be harder for me to edit. <laughs> I plan on doing more videos like this in the future, so if you do have any questions that you really think would be useful to be made into a video, whether you want it for yourself, for family members, for friends, or anyone who you feel would benefit from these type of videos, then please do put some comments down below, or feel free to email me, which is crystalbella.dyspraxia at gmail.com. It's also in the link below if you're not sure how to spell that. And yes, this is a wig, my hair is normally blonde. I hope my videos are very useful for you all. And again, I'm open to any kind of categories you want me to cover. So again, put that in the description or email me. Bye bye, bye bye, bye.